You might think you know Star Trek, but here are 12 facts you may not have known about the comic book voyages of the Starship Enterprise. The first Star Trek comic book was October 1967 Star Trek No. 1 from Gold Key Comics. This issue featured the story The Planet of No Return by writer Dave Wood and artist Nevio Zakara, as well as a number of one-page gag strips that have nothing to do with Star Trek whatsoever. The Gold Key series lasted for 61 issues between 1967 and 1979. Most stories were original concepts, but later issues featured sequels to famous episodes of the show. Series artist Alberto Giolitti had never seen the show and only had publicity stills for reference. Since he had no photos of James Duhon, comics Mr. Scott is off-model early on. Next, Marvel gained the license and began producing stories starting with an adaptation of Star Trek The Motion Picture. However, they didn't have any rights to the material from the TV series and could only use characters from the motion picture. This series lasted for 18 issues, ending in 1981. DC Comics then published a 56-issue series from 1984 to 1988 that picked up the story after Wrath of Khan, then an 80-issue series from 1989 to 1996 set between Star Trek V and Star Trek VI. DC also published Next Generation Comics, starting with a miniseries in 1988, followed by an 80-issue ongoing in 1989. While DC was publishing comics based on the original series and Next Generation, Malibu Comics put out a 32-issue series based on Deep Space Nine from 1993 to 1996, and also teamed up with DC to publish a DS9 Next Generation crossover in 1994. In 1996, the Star Trek license returned to Marvel, who published ongoing series based on Deep Space Nine and Voyager, as well as a series called Early Voyages, based on Christopher Pike's time as Captain of the Enterprise and Starfleet Academy, about a group of cadets, including Nog, the Ferengi from DS9. By 1999, however, DC regained the license and published various limited series through its imprint Wildstorm. These various stories adapted Next Generation in the period between Insurrection and Nemesis, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, the New Frontier novel series, and the video game Elite Force. DC's license once again expired in 2002, and for years, comic shops were trekless until 2006, when Tokyo Pop published the manga-style anthology of stories based on Next Generation called Shinsei Shinsei, followed by another called Kakan Nishinku in 2007. As happens with every license sooner or later, Star Trek ended up at IDW Publishing in 2006, where it remains as of this writing. In this time, IDW has published hundreds of issues and dozens of miniseries based on Next Generation, Wrath of Khan, the original series, the reboot universe, and more. Alas, there has never, from any publisher, been a series based on Star Trek Enterprise. In addition to all these comic book comics, there were two different comic strips based on Star Trek. The first ran in the British magazine TV Century 21 from 1969 to 1973. The second was a syndicated strip that ran in American papers from 1979 to 1983. In 1996, Marvel released a crossover special between the original series and the X-Men, which largely seemed to be a setup for a joke about how Bones and Beast were both named Dr. McCoy. A team-up between the Next Generation cast and the X-Men followed in 1998, with a sequel novel called Planet X based on the same premise. Other comic book crossovers include The Legion of Superheroes in 2011, Doctor Who in 2012, Planet of the Apes in 2014, Green Lantern in 2015, and Kinda Sorta with G.I. Joe, Transformers, and the Ghostbusters in 2011. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Comics. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Comics Alliance for more comic facts, and check out ComicsAlliance.com for more comic awesomeness.